I guess the enemy's good at pulling a blindfold over your eyes and making life seem like it's okay where you're at, but it wasn't. And so that's when I knew I needed the change and I knew I couldn't do it without him. Welcome to the Jesus Calling Podcast. Today's guests share how their lives have been uniquely blessed by friendships with both humans and animals, and how these special connections have helped them understand and strengthen their relationship with God. Bull rider Cody Nance and Lori Bear and Janice Larson of His Haven Ranch. First up, Cody Nance has lived nearly his whole life at the rodeo and is ranked number 25 in the world for his skill as a bull rider. He recounts how, in his younger years, he lost track of God, but then found his way back to Him after realizing how hard it was to make life work without Him. My name is Cody Nance. Um, I'm a father, I'm a husband. I'm a bull rider uh, by profession, and so where I grew up in Paris, Tennessee, it was a pretty small town, and and we didn't uh, have a lot of cattle, and I didn't rodeo, but my stepfather did, and he's the one that got me into rodeo, and I used to team rope and got into riding bulls uh, at about 14, so that's what I've been doing ever since. Where I grew up, at, we trained a lot of horses, though, and, and messed around with a lot of horses. I think that helped me establish that foundation. The first thing that drew me to bull riding was my stepdad. He was my hero when I was a little kid. I uh, was two years old when he and my mom met, and, and he rode bulls, and I just thought that was the best thing ever. And then he went on to judge a bunch of rodeos, and that's just kind of how I got into bull riding. He had a barrel, and and that barrel uh, it simulated a bull buck, and we'd get on it and play. And, um, he was the one that taught my mom in to let me get on my first bull, and she didn't really like it a whole lot, but she's very thankful that he did because now here I am still doing what I love 16 years later, and I've been uh, very blessed. I've made the world finals uh, in Vegas. I've, I've been able to be used on a platform like I'd never imagined before, and I'm just thankful that God's allowed me to do that. Well, when I was younger, uh, when we would go to church quite often, um, I always felt the Spirit was strong, and I knew God, and I knew His voice. I knew uh, a little bit about the Word, but that was the one thing I think I was lacking the most. And later on in life, whenever I kind of got down the wrong path, and family got away from church, and you know, not our faith so much, but we just didn't talk about it, and we didn't have fellowship like we should have, and um, it allowed me to um, I guess drift away a little. So I got into a lot of hectic things in my life that sent me straight down the bad path. And I was, uh, I was doing some drugs and drinking and running around just being a young guy. And I feel like I knew God as a, as a young man, but I was, uh, taught in a lot of wrong ways, you know, um, taught more fear for the enemy than I was love for God. And I feel like that was, the biggest issue with it uh, and I feel like uh, it affected me in some way you know as far as uh, feeling like I needed to do something to please God and I do believe that God had saved me when I was young but I believe I, I lost uh, track of the most important thing and that was just being faithful in my love for him and and his worship and worshiping him and I didn't I guess realize what my life had gone to. Later, I guess when I got saved in 2009, the enemy started in on me. And I, I continued to read and, and the Bible says that he's like a lion seeking to devour his prey. And the first thing he's going to try to devour is your mind because your mind stems the rest of your body. And I'm not going to let the enemy steal my joy. And the joy of the Lord is my strength, and I'm not worried about what the enemy has. God's going to protect me, he says so in Psalms 91. And I believe that with all my heart, and he has. And, you know, this uh, this amazing journey that I've been on um, along following the Lord, I just, uh, I'm so thankful that he is there, and he's always there, because if I, if he wasn't, then, I mean, I'm obviously I would have been devoured a long time ago. I mean, that, uh, that fear is paralyzing, so you got to have faith, and so that faith presses me on. In his hardest moments, Cody has learned if he allows himself to stay close to God, God will stay close to him. 
Cody reads from the September 18th entry of Jesus Calling, which talks about this very thing. Seek to please me above all else. Each day presents you with choice after choice. Many of these decisions you ignore and thus make by default. Without a focal point to guide you, you can easily lose your way. That's why it is important to stay in communication with me, living in thankful awareness of my presence. You inhabit a fallen, disjointed world where things constantly unraveling around the edges. Only a vibrant relationship with me can keep you from coming unraveled too. I feel like uh, for me, I, I solely rely on God. I feel like when I nod my head and I'm strapped to the back of that animal, he's a 2,000 pound animal jumping in the air and kicking and I have no direction which way he's gonna go. And that's just like the life that like, God leads me down. And you know, sometimes it gets a little wild, and but he's always there and he's always taking care of me. Now that bull, he may not always be trying to take care of me, but that's why we got the angels in the outfield, right? <laughs> <laughs> to find out more about Cody or see where he's riding near you, follow Cody Nance on social media. We'll be right back with Lori Bear and Janice Larson from His Haven Ranch after a brief message about a way you can connect with other Jesus Calling readers each week in prayer. Did you know that Sarah Young, the author of Jesus Calling, prays for her readers each day? In that spirit, we want to extend the Jesus Calling prayer community out to you in a more personal way. Each Tuesday morning, you can dial into the Jesus Calling weekly prayer call, where the team from Jesus Calling and special guests will minister to us during a 10-minute call to reflect on that day's passage from Jesus Calling, read scripture references, and pray together for each other and our world. Prayer call times are 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Central, 6 a.m. Mountain, and 5 a.m. Pacific, and are for U.S. only. For more information on the Jesus Calling weekly prayer call or to submit prayer requests, please visit JesusCalling.com slash prayer dash call. Again, to join us in this community of prayer every Tuesday morning, please visit JesusCalling.com slash prayer dash call. Going back to when they were little girls, Lori Bear and Janice Larson had a deep love of horses, and today they share that love at His Haven Ranch, a faith-based nonprofit that uses horses to help struggling kids find their way. Lori and Janice tell us how caring for an animal is sometimes the best way to learn how to care for ourselves, and they share how they've watched God use animals to transform the lives of those who are most vulnerable. My name is Lori Bear, and I am the Chief Operating Officer at His Haven Ranch. I have about 40 years of experience working with horses and caring for horses, and I've been on the ranch team from the day it started back in 2006. I live and breathe horses. It's, it's what I love, it's what I do, and they have been such a big part of my life that it seems impossible to not share them with other people. I'm Janice Larson. I'm a wife, a mother, and a grandmother. Lori called me and asked if I would consider being a grandmother figure at his haven for the foster children that would be coming in the summer. I immediately said yes, and I've been, I've been in love with horses like Lori since I was a very young girl, one of God's most beautiful creatures to me. And there's always something to learn about horses and each other, because each, just like people, have their own personality. His Haven Ranch has been around since 2006, and our founder's name is Heidi McGraw, and her husband, Kevin, um, was was a pastor in our community, and he also was instrumental in creating the foundation and the nonprofit His Haven Ranch. Heidi and I, as God would do, as only God can do, I should say, um, we were neighbors, and we didn't know we were neighbors until we were picking up our kids from school one day. And... Um, we got to talking in the in this 
um, office while we were waiting for our kids for the bell to ring and everything. And lo and behold, we were both horse lovers and we were at home, stay at home moms. So we had some time to actually be in the saddle when our kids were at school. So we started riding horse together, just riding the gravel roads in our little neck of the woods and just talking about our childhoods. I had no idea she and I grew up in similar situations where, you know, it was very difficult. Life in our families as a child was very difficult. We both had had extenuating circumstances, um, whether it be addiction or, or mental health issues, but we had a difficult childhood growing up. And one of the things that kept both Heidi and I from going off the deep end or going off the rails was having that time with our horse, taking care of our horse, um, spending that time with our horse, crying in our horse's mane, riding our horse was a piece of that, but it was the total care of that horse and the way that the horse looks at you and accepts you and, and doesn't try to fix you, um, just understands you and definitely never betrays your confidence. I mean, I think of all the things that I told my horse that, that, you know, she just looked at me like she totally understood what I was talking about and let me just get all that stuff off my little chest. So our four-legged friends um, gave us a picture and a model of something that maybe God could do on a greater level. You know, Heidi and I were two moms with a couple of horses and we really felt compelled uh, there was a, a rash of suicides in our little community, and they were young people. We're talking middle school, high school age. And we started just looking at at solutions to how we could have influence in their lives and maybe have the same type of healing that we had in our lives through the touch of a horse and through the love of a Savior. And our mission was to, to make a place that would empower and transform lives through healing in the Savior. That's what his stands for, healing in the Savior. And so by doing that, we would create a place that would be an organization that did one-on-one -on -one mentoring with anybody who was struggling with anxiety, depression, self-injurious behavior, suicidal thoughts, whatever it was. It could be loneliness. Our perimeters were wide. They had to um, be willing to come to the ranch and help. When you're working with a horse, I, I feel like they, they train you up in grace. They train you up in how not only to be able to be a receiver of grace, but to be a dispenser of grace too. Because when your horse, um, when you make a mistake on a horse and that horse goes, oh, that's okay, and they don't react to it and they just let you get back on course, it really is humbling because we know how big they are and we know that they're a prey animal and we know that they could easily get away from us or harm us and they choose, they choose to partner with us in our healing. And when we look at who the Lord brings out to the ranch, it's typically somebody who's feeling hurt, feeling a little disconnected. Um, perhaps they've gotten some labels at school and, you know, I, I think for a lot of our, our, our riders, they, they haven't had a, a model of how to work through conflict and how to fight the good fight, you know, to fight so that everybody wins. And so working with a horse, you learn quickly that you've got to learn how to communicate and regulate. And when we learn how to communicate and regulate with a nonverbal animal, <laughs> it makes it a little bit easier to do it with the verbal pieces of our life and the people that we're encountering. So we see a wide variety. We have 227 registered riders right now. We have pastor's kids. We have foster kids. We have kids who live with their mom. We have kids who live with their dad. We have kids who live with their grandparents. We have kids who live with their aunts. I mean, it really is about um, creating a sense of family in a culture where family has become so different. So part of our program is when they come, they don't just get on a horse that's all saddled up. They actually have to help take care of the horse, which means they might be mucking a stall. They might be filling feed pans. They might be picking up dry lot. They might be doing hay. Whatever it meant, 
to do that day, whatever had to be done that day, they would be helping with. And they would also get their own horse ready. Nobody would do it for them. Um, part of our program is empowering individuals to be able to do things. And one of the things that we wanted to empower them to be able to do was get their own horse ready and ride their own horse. So what makes our program unique is that not only do we use the horse um, to bring about a therapeutic relaxation and, and regulation in a person's body, but we use the Word of God. And the first 15 minutes of our 90-minute session, the mentor sits down with a Bible study that the Lord has downloaded them with. It might be Jesus calling, it might be scripture, it might be some other um, resource that the Lord gives them. And we will sit down and personally spend time with them looking at what God's word is saying and what application it has for their particular season of life in whatever situation they're in. And then after we start with the word of God, we go right to work. We get those hands busy and we let them ponder and chew on what we just talked about. The whole rest of our session is spent chewing on the word of God and just letting that go deep. And when they're on the back of that horse, uh, they get a perspective. And when we sow in the seed of the word of God before they can get into that saddle, um, we pray that the perspective that they have will be an eternal perspective. So we use a horse and we use the Word of God and they seem to work really well together. I can't tell you exact year, but it was probably around 2003 or four. One of our friends from horse showing, Randy, he uh, one day came over to our trailer and gave me a Jesus Calling book. He would buy them by the case he was handing them out. And I started reading it every day, and it just spoke to me so personally about everything that was going on in my, in my life and things that would happen in that day that I would think back on that reading. And I like Jesus Calling so much because it has the scriptures on the bottom. So it is really a wonderful, a wonderful devotion to me. And I think for a lot of kids, it's a turning point to know that this is what a father's voice really sounds like because we don't know what we don't know. So Jesus Calling makes it really easy for us to dispense the gospel with Sarah's words in God's voice. And it just makes it so much easier for us to do this job for the kingdom. This is a reading from uh, Jesus Calling. Relax in my peaceful presence. Do not bring performance pressures into our sacred space of communion. When you are with someone you must trust completely. You feel free to be yourself. This is one of the joys of true friendship. Though I am the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, I also desire to be your intimate friend. When you are tense or pretentious in our relationship, I feel hurt. I know the worst about you, but I all see the best in you. I long for you to trust me enough to be full of yourself with me. When you are real with me, I am able to bring out the best in you, the very gifts I have planted in your soul. Relax and enjoy our friendship. When I could read a passage like this, to know that I can come to him, trust him completely, and he frees me up to, to be that friendship to those people, just like he is to me. And uh, to know that I hurt him if I do not bring all these things to him. So, uh, and that's just like every reading in, in uh, Jesus Calling. He wants to be our friend. He wants to be that lover of our life. He just needs to. He needs to, just like we need. So that's why we were created. And like Janice said, it's not our job to judge the, the growth. It's not our job to judge the fruit. It's our job to sow the seed and our job to water the seed. And that means giving God's word out and dispensing it freely. So different than what the Bible shows us family is. And really, you know, helping them be able to navigate through just because things are different doesn't make them wrong. You know, that's when we really have to go to God's word and say, Lord, you know, this is what this is what I have to work with. This is where I'm at. And we get to watch God do some amazing things when we coach through the use of a horse and through the word of God. 
we found that people use the term at-risk youth a lot. And I really disliked that term because we're all at risk. We're all at risk for something. If we're, if we're being honest with ourselves, we all have vulnerabilities. We're all at risk. And, you know, we would label these labels that we give kids and we call them attention seeking. But instead of calling someone an attention seeking behavior, I've started to look at it as a connection seeking behavior. These uh, little writers are just so, um, after they open up a little bit, they're so eager, and the horses just just open them up. I always refer to as that like a, a rose opening up and all the petals get exposed, all their little talents get exposed. It's such an honor to do it, that, that God has chosen us to do this. To learn more about the work Lori and Janice are doing at His Haven Ranch and how you can support them, please visit www.hishavenranch.com. If you'd like to hear more stories about the power of connecting with animals, check out our interviews with animal rescue advocate LaVon Redfarin and country music artist Erlene Mandrell. Next time on the Jesus Calling Podcast, Bluegrass Group, Daly and Vincent, share why they endeavor to bring messages of hope to the people who need it most and remind us that we can never know what people might be going through. We get testimonies all the time saying, I'm going through chemo and your music got me through uh, just being there taking these chemo treatments and just being sick and you make me feel better. I feel the presence of the Lord through the music that you guys sing. And I think that's where the music speaks volumes. And I think it's global. It's not just in the United States, but I think it's, it's a universal language that, that the music speaks to everybody. Do you love hearing these stories of faith weekly from people like you whose lives have been changed by a closer walk with God? Then be sure to subscribe to the Jesus Calling Stories of Faith podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you like what you're hearing, leave us a review so that we can reach others with these inspirational stories. And you can also see these interviews on video as part of our original web series with a new interview premiering every other Sunday on Facebook Live. Find previously broadcast interviews on our YouTube channel on IGTV or on JesusCalling.com slash video.